My guest today is Ruth Yakubu. Ruth, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks, David. Oh, thanks for being on my show. I really enjoyed your presentation here at the Chicago Cloud Conference. Oh, thank you. It was a pleasure being here. It, was, it, wasn't, yeah, it wasn't your first presentation. What, what do you do? So I'm a cloud um, advocate at Microsoft. Mm -hmm. So basically what we do is um, go to conferences and speak. Um, show the developers and the audience all the amazing stuff that we have going on for Azure, on Azure. Um, and also I work closely with um, startups on getting them to um, know what services we have on Azure, how they can benefit from it, how they can save um, money from it. And also Microsoft offers uh, Microsoft for Azure credits. Mm -hmm for um, startups, which is amazing. I also do office hours or workshops with the, um, the startup community. Excellent, that sounds like a fun job. I love it, I Excellent. love it, <laughs> yeah. What should we talk about? Uh, Azure is such a broad subject, let's narrow it down. What's something that you're excited about? So for me, um, the areas that I'm really excited is uh, machine learning and um, AI. Okay. Yeah, for, uh, um, Azure, and especially for this year. Oh yeah, what's going um, on with Azure and the machine learning space? So, for machine learning, um, initially we had a service called the Machine Learning Studio. Uh -huh. So I really like that service. I the know, drag and drop. Drag thing. and drop. To, you yeah. go to like a university, and they have never done machine learning before. They can get up to speed. In yeah. 20 minutes. So that was like a very good way for even beginners to mm. know what it goes through, like the data cleansing part, bring in your data, you know, bring in the algorithm, mm -hmm. then building the model and whatnot. So it was very visual, so I like that. Um, so now we've consolidated that in another, proprietor, uh, another predecessor, which was called Azure Workbench. Okay. So the new one is called Azure Machine Learning Service, and it has a lot of awesome, amazing services there for people who are beginners in machine learning mm -hmm. or who are seasoned on data scientists. Okay. What is it? Is it a user interface like ML Studio, or is it a, a, an API, or, or what? Um, actually, it's a suite of uh, services. So um, the good thing is for developers, um, a lot of um, machine learning developers use Python. Right. So they code their um, applications um, or their models that they're as they're trying to build their machine learning models. They use uh, Jupyter no Notebook and whatnot. Sure. So the good thing is you can easily integrate um, or start your notebooks um, using machine learning. Um, you can connect easily to that. Um, you can also provision your compute um, in the service um, after you build your models, there's a way for you to store your models because you know with machine learning as we're doing experiments, um, you know, you're working with a whole group of teams and you guys are sharing a centralized data um, and processes and whatnot. So it has a workbench um, for your team to collaborate and build all of this. And um, when you build a model and put it into production, it doesn't mean that's a done deal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a continually learning um, experience, maybe based upon the data, new data that came, you may need to go back and refine your data. Um, so the good thing about uh, machine learning is um, Azure machine learning is you can go back to the history of uh, the different models okay. or if something goes haywire you can also go and find it back in history oh, what broke it yeah what broke it uh, especially for auditing sure then another area that um, a lot of uh, people in the machine learning space are struggling is how do you do DevOps 
Yes. And what? Jupyter Notebooks isn't really DevOps friendly, has been my experience. Yeah. So the good thing is um, you can incorporate all of that, different pipelines um, in, with um, the ML ops. So you can use um, the Azure DevOps. Oh, ML ops? I'm not familiar with that. What is that? Well, it's a term of um, you're using machine um, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. but the ops portion. Okay. So that whole flow of building your application, testing it, mm -hmm. deploying it, and actually okay. using. So when you say MLOps, you were just referring to DevOps for a machine learning solution. Exactly, oh, right. yeah. I just learned a new word. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, now walk me through a, a typical scenario that a data scientist wants to build some sort of machine learning solution using this tool set. What do they, where do they go? Do they go to the Azure? Do they start in the Azure portal? Yeah. So they will start in the Azure portal. They'll create, let's say, the um, Azure um, workbench um, for the Azure machine learning service. Mm -hmm. um, they'll create an experiment. Okay. Uh, UI then, like, like ML Studio was? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's a UI based one. Mm -hmm. And you do all the scripting because the Jupyter Notebook, it looks like um, oh, any that's other. The, the UI is a Jupyter Notebook. Yeah. Okay. And the good thing is um, the different um, frameworks that you're used to, um, let's say Keras, um, PyCharm, and you know, different um, frameworks that yeah. um, you're used to using, you can also bring it within okay. this and yeah, utilize that's one of the powers it. of Python is it it's it's not a huge language but it has all of this uh, ecosystem around it where you can yeah uh, read data, uh, graph data and uh, do some machine learning, that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, the, the development then is all done in a Jupyter notebook. And I mm -hmm. write out, let's say, something that I want to, oh, I don't know, import a bunch of images and analyze them and find out, you know, which of them um, is uh, a hot dog and which one is not a hot dog. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a classic machine learning problem. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, and then what? Now I have a, I have a model. Yeah. How do I share that? How do I collaborate with it? So, you, like you mentioned, you need data, right? So there's a way for you to bring in your import your data. Okay. There's also a tab for you to store all the models that you have hmm. okay. um, after you um, use your uh, Jupyter Notebook. To you deploy, um, you train it. Now you have um, the output, which is a model. Um, you can store the model. So there's an area for you to store all your models there. And is that so that someone else can use that model to build a different solution? Um, yeah, you can. Other people on your team can use that model. Or um, let's say in the future, if something goes wrong, we can always go back and reference the model and mm -hmm. see what changed, what didn't change, that sort of thing. Okay. And how do people, how, how do you share that? How do people use that model? Um, how do people yeah, is that a, is that a, a published as a web service is it something they can download to their uh, mobile application or how, how does that work yeah so it all depends on what uh, platform that you're using because there are different uh, formats of uh, models when you um, deploy a model so it could be onyx it could be another format mm -hmm. um, the actual usage of it you can even use it in Java. Okay. Um, so it's a matter of um, having a programming language that is able to read that, mm -hmm. um, be able to open it, integrate with um, the model, and actually use it in the business process. Hmm. Yeah, because the model is the actual finished product. Right. So you have... Um, you have a way, it's almost like a zip file. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when you um, break it apart and open it to be able to utilize it as uh, API, then you plug in it into your business model and it's gonna be able to work. Okay, um, one of the, you mentioned ML 
ops. And uh, I always find one of the big challenges with um, Jupyter Notebooks is getting that code into source control. How does that work? Um, that's a good question because uh, with source control, um, that's part of the apps. So with the uh, Azure Machine Learning, um, it has pipelines for uploading your application. Oh, these are Azure Dev, pip Dev Apps pipelines? Yeah. Okay. So you're building the model, you see it working, then you deploying it, let's say, to an instance and whatnot. Mm -hmm. it's, it's stored there. Anytime there's a new upload, you can also um, build upon that. But the good thing about um, the Azure uh, DevOps, it, it stores a history of all your... Um, all your changes. All your changes. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's the advantage of... Um, Source control in general. Yeah, exactly. Getting it to work with something like that's that's kind of natively online has always been a challenge for me. Yeah. Um, how, how does um, this differ from, say, Azure Notebooks, for example? Um, Azure Notebooks. I have not used. Oh, okay. Oh, they were just a service that was uh, introduced. I don't know, two years ago. Okay. And um, they are essentially notebooks just hosted in Azure. Oh, got it, got it. I think got that's it. just about it. That's all. If you wanted to create a Jupyter Notebook, uh -huh. store it in Azure, you could do that. Yeah. Well, it this sounds like uh, this is that plus more, maybe. Yeah, they integrate it with that because, you know, you don't necessarily have to create a Jupyter Notebook, then bring it in. Okay. From the workbench, you can actually generate a Jupyter Notebook and start coding from uh -huh. there. Yeah. Hmm. And tell me a little about the collaboration. What if you have multiple users uh, on the same project? Um, that's actually the good thing about it because let's say you're working with data. Um, one person creates a model that maybe works and another person creates another model that doesn't work. The question is, okay, what changed? Because you guys are working with the same sort of stuff. So you can look at their, how they coded theirs, okay. what algorithms they used, that sort of thing. So you have a centralized data. Um, it could be the way they cleanse their data. So what parameters did you feed into your machine learning model mm -hmm. in order to train your model, that sort of thing. Um, another thing that is uh, very interesting for um, the solution is um, we also introduce um, auto ML now. What's that? So auto ML is a very useful tool because for data scientists, it may seem like you just upload the code, apply the algorithm, and have a model, AI model, but people don't realize the amount of time it takes to run. You can run a process for like eight hours. At the end, it's not optimal. You're still not getting like uh, good results. Hmm. So with auto ML is, it's, uh, it's almost like a helper for you. So you load your data, you specify your key parameters and whatnot, you configure the auto ML settings, and let's say you say, okay, this is a classification model. You run it, mm -hmm. and it'll also come up with um, different optimize, um, or try different uh, optimize uh, algorithms on it and it'll come up with the best solution for it. So the hmm. best approach to come up with the right answer. So all of that trial and error that a lot of uh, us uh, machine learning people or data science go through, sure. um, you no longer have to go, well, you go through it, but this is like another way to help you because it's trying different uh, it, it semi-automates that process. Yeah, it's trying different experiments, and at the end, it's going to show you the most optimal one. 
okay. um, based upon your data and based upon um, what your insights you're trying to grab into it. And it will also show you the key factors that um, maybe you thought this would be a driving factor to make a decision of it, but there uh, were other criteria within your data that um, I like that a lot. I think that. the number one thing that data scientists spend their time on is cleaning the data. And yeah. the second thing is trying to decide which model to use. And sometimes uh -huh. that's making educated guess, uh -huh. seeing how it works, and then trying another one. It's a lot of trial and error in that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is a lot of stuff. Is there is there anything that we haven't talked about that we should have? Um, yeah, so one thing that's very cool that I like to bring to the forefront is uh, form recognition yes that was introduced uh, this year so you know how we go to doctor's office we fill out forms and it feels like we're doing our taxes i just have a headache yeah <laughs> but um all of that some person is actually manually entering all the stuff we wrote on paper. And that's a headache. <laughs> into the computer. Yeah, it's a lot of so, duplicating processing. Yeah, so the good thing is with uh, this AI um, new service that we introduce is you'll be able to feed in those forms, it extracts all of those data, hmm. puts it into a structural form for you, a digitized form for you to store into a database, which I think is very amazing. That is very cool. And actually, that's what I'm flying to Tampa for, is the project using form recognizer. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Excellent. Where are you going next? You're doing a lot of speaking around the world, right? Um, right now, I have an accelerator workshop to do uh, where? Um, with uh, Tech um, Stars Sports. In New York? Yeah, in New York. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're based all over, but it's yeah. going to be a phone call. Yeah, they have a presence here in Chicago. Yeah, exactly. Um, excellent. And you have an online presence, do you not? Yeah. So you can find me on Twitter at uh, Ruthie, then my last name, Yakubu, Y-A-K-U-B-U. -U. Um, that's my Twitter handle. Then you can also find me on LinkedIn, which is Ruth Yakubu. Yeah. Ruth, thank you so much. Thank you, David. It's amazing um, having this interview with David. Now I'm looking to have um, lunch with um, other technology, people in technology who are friends um, because they're developers. And the good thing is they're Java developer friends, which I love. Thank you.